Welcome back to North Metro TV News. As we continue our look today at stories and people that are doing, you know, just great things in our community, we are glad to be joined now by Julie Jepson, who wears multiple hats as we were just talking yep. about. Yes, um, but Blaine City Council member, but also uh, Executive Director of Stepping Stone Emergency Housing. And uh, Julie, tell us just shortly, just a little bit about Stepping yeah. Stone for those who maybe d aren't familiar with your organization. Thank you. Yeah, um, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for having me here. Um, Any time where we can inform the community about what Stepping Stone is, is, is a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. So Stepping Stone is the only homeless shelter serving uh, men and women 18 and older. Uh, we're located in Anoka. We serve Anoka County, but what a lot of people don't understand is that we're the only homeless shelter in Anoka County, Washington County, Dakota, Scott and Carver counties in the five five counties surrounding Hennepin and Ramsey. And we provide all basic needs, but we go beyond that. It's the programming and the services and amenities that um, make us make, make us such a special special gem here in the county serving the homeless community. What has 2017 been like for your organization? How many people have you seen that are in need that have come through your doors? 2017 has been a huge learning process as each year is mm -hmm. and the trends that we've been seeing and and the interesting things that have surfaced uh, we typically serve around 400 individuals a year mm -hmm. this year we're going to serve about f almost 500 oh. um, and then our waiting list has been so fascinating to watch and learn from the data um, usually we have about a 50 to 100 person waiting list mm -hmm. over the summer we had almost 250 people on our waiting list just this week we have almost a little over 200 so mm -hmm. So we see that the need is getting greater yeah. and the gap between homelessness and independence is getting wider and how we're trying to answer um, or fill that gap is what we're looking forward to mm -hmm. in 2018. Um, how, you know, I know it's different, but on average, how often or how long does somebody stay with you? Sure. So an individual can stay, you know, one night up to over a year. We have mm. some women who have been there over a year, but that's based on their need. Um, but on average, about 50 nights is okay. how long a person stays. Okay. Um, one of those people is Ken. And I'm, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm really excited that you guys put this together. This really, you know, it's in his own words. And yeah. we're, that's what we're going to take a look at now. One of your clients in their own words telling their story. So yeah. let's take a look. I kind of got off to a real bad start by the time I left my parents. I was on a lot of drugs and I'd have fits and starts where maybe I'd work for about four years before the apartment folded up and the shift I was working got discontinued and I couldn't really fit into first shift as well. And I ended up staying in my car in a trailer park. I couldn't really find a job because I didn't really have any clothes or an address to give them. It looks funny on a application if you're putting no fixed address or general delivery. And I was couch surfing. It was kind of a couple weeks here, a couple months there, and slowly losing friends as uh, I kind of overstayed my welcome. You know, it's really a shame when you lose a friend because they're really trying to help you, but you just kind of need more help than they can give. There's, we're very isolated growing up. Living closely with others, you kind of see some of your own behaviors in other people, and when you're on the other end of them, you learn, grow. <laughs> I was kicked off my friend's couch for the day. I was cold, wandering the streets. Uh, I was talking loudly to myself, so I stopped at Walmart to get a uh, ride to uh, the emergency room. Does do some mental health. It's not the best place to go, but at three in the morning, it was uh, it was where I had to go. I needed an ambulance to go to the hospital and the police always uh, always come with that and Stepping Stone works closely with the police. Police run into people who could really benefit from being here all the time and they'll uh, 
get your name on the wait list for you. This was a great place to kind of develop my sobriety. I was at four or five weeks, really, uh, really vulnerable time for it when I came in. Now being six months clean and sober, I've got pretty stable footing. Taking the day-to-day -day pressure of what am I gonna eat, where am I gonna sleep off, really, uh, really helped me focus on things I had on the back burner. And the laundry facilities were a big plus. I had one pair of underwear when I got here and I didn't, didn't get very many chances to wash them. I had tried a treatment program, it wasn't for me. It wasn't as good of a living situation. A lot of places have kind of a atmosphere of learned hopelessness where people have been kicked down so many times they don't even try to get up. And things are really a lot more hopeful here. Um, trying to get you better clothes so you can get a job and spend your time improving yourself and improving your prospects and they uh, really do a good job of feeding people. They make sure we have fruit and salad at every meal and they give us a gym to uh, kind of get the blood moving to your head and get in shape a little better and they really encourage you and get, give you a lot of uh, ideas to get a job. Well, I just uh, just received a full-time position at the uh, job the temp agency found me. I'm hoping to get an apartment near my work and uh, get a reliable car. And then uh, I'd like to find a woman to partner with in my new life. One of the things I learned here was learning to accept help. Nobody can do life on their own. And this was a great help for me. Ken's story is really inspiring, and I'm sure there's multiple stories that you know yeah. just like his. There are, and it, and it it brings staff back to stepping stone mm. every day. That's Ken is the reason why mm. we do what we do because we're you know the stories like Ken, the people like Ken, the the resiliency that they um, mm -hmm. that they experience and and the pure drive mm. to get them over homelessness mm -hmm. and into self-sufficiency is just so inspiring. Mm -hmm. Now this prob this problem of homelessness is as you said not going away. There's no. so there's so much need out there. Uh, what does 2018 hold for you as you look forward into the next year? 2018 is going to be a pivotal year honestly for Stepping Stone. First it's our 10 year anniversary. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about that. Um, but because of some funding things because of the, that gap mm -hmm. that we're seeing we're really kind of overhauling our programs mm. and really making it effective for people who want to get out of homelessness that they're able to financially and physically emotionally get out of their homelessness so you know there's some some growth um, opportunities that we're looking at there are some programmatic opportunities we're looking at we're really also looking internally as to how our policies processes and procedures are working and making sure that those are are really on track with um, what we need to do and stick with our vision and mission well julie i want to thank you for the work you are doing and uh, thanks stepping stone for just being another wonderful organization um, filling a big need in our community thank you so much ben for this opportunity right. i really appreciate it